Hello everybody, welcome back to the God Central Podcast. This is episode 8 and I'm joined by Tom Scrivens from Hope Church in Ipswich. Tom is the lead elder of Hope Church and he is also a member of the oversight team for God Central. So today we're going to be discussing, it's a bit of a juicy subject and something, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to talk about, but it's, uh, are we seeing a decline or is faith in the UK and the Western world becoming extinct? Is it disappearing? So I've just finished editing this one. There's a few parts where, you know, we have a few internet issues, audio and video aren't quite in sync with each other, but I've done what I can. Also, before I go and before we get into it, the next one, the plan is anyway, to do it in person. So the guest, somebody you should all know, I hope so. Hopefully we'll be in, well, we're trying to make it work. We're in the same room and we'll be able to do a podcast in person, recorded live. Well, not live, but recorded. Anyway, see you soon. All right. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? Hi, Rob. I'm doing really well, thank you. It's good to be with you. Hope you're doing okay? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Not too bad. Welcome to the uh, the God Central podcast. So, um, yes. we're going to be discussing today, are we seeing a decline in faith? I don't, I don't want to say in, in around the world. That's a bit too broad. But I think in the Western world, and specifically in the UK, are we going to see... I suppose it is is faith uh, going extinct, <laughs> which is quite a quite yeah. a bleak thing to talk about. But I think it's an important conversation. So I've seen you a few times. Yeah. We've kind of yeah. met a couple of times now, but to the people of God Central, they may not know you quite so well. So who are you, Tom? <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm Tom, and I'm uh, married to Sarah. We've got three. Children, we live in Ipswich, just uh, not a million miles from Harlow, uh, over here in Suffolk. And um, I have the joy of leading the team of elders at Hope Church here in Ipswich, and part of the same family of churches as God Central, uh, relational mission, uh, which is about seventy or so churches in um, mostly in England, but there's others in various other nations in Europe and a few uh, outliers as well in um, in various different continents, far flung and. Um, Part of the, the wider family of churches, New Frontiers, which is now a couple of thousand churches across the globe. And and within Relational Mission, I have a, a role of a community leader, which is to uh, help to care for some of the churches on behalf of the uh, apostolic team, which is uh, a team of guys, Mike Betts, some of you will know of, Morris Nightingale and Steph Liston. And so on their behalf, I help to care for some churches. And um, in the last uh, couple of years, I've got to know uh, God Central, particularly with the team, but also have come and uh, spent some time on a Sunday with you and preached a few times um, during this crazy COVID season as well. And so along with David Barham, who many of you, your listeners will know, uh, we've been just supporting the church in a, in a time of transition. And it's a real joy. I really love getting to know uh, some of the, the leadership team and been over uh, to Harlow a few times to meet with them. So yeah, that's who a bit about me and how we know each other, I suppose. And uh, Yeah. And Hope to, Hope Church has got uh, some big going on at the moment. You've got your um, your 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 new premises, I suppose, the construction project. Tell us about that. Yes, oh, that's coming along. Yeah, it's, I was um, I was supposed to yeah, go up there. Really actually. <laughs> was it last year? I can't remember. What, no, it would have been the year before now. Um, yeah. Didn't go doing shift work, which is you know always a pain, but. Yeah, um, I feel a little bit gutted about that. <laughs> I wanted to go along. Yeah, we had a few guys come, uh, Ben, Jim, Jim, Menard, I think a few others come come over and it was uh, great to to have them there just to show them around. And um, yeah, basically for those of your listeners who are not aware, we've uh, purchased the former Odeon Cinema in the centre of Ipswich. Um, it's a five screen cinema. It closed in the early 2000s. It was only open for about 15 years. It was built in the early 90s. And um, we've, we bought it at the end of 2018. And since then, we've been in the process of renovating it. And really now in the last stages, we're going to be moving in this summer. We think it will now be September, early September. We had hoped it would be July. But as, uh, as any Spurs fans out there will know, these, these projects take it a bit of time to finish sometimes. And any, 
anyone who's had any experience with any building project will know that sometimes these things get delayed. And um, But um, we're now expecting to be in, in September. Um, and what we're going to have at the end of it all is, uh, is a great new home for us as a church, a new base from which we can have our, our Sunday gatherings, but from which we can really uh, serve our town as well. It's it's perfectly placed, literally at the end of the high street and, mm. um, and, and a place that many, many people in the town know. And uh, it's so exciting. We, we've um, been out on the streets many times as a church and people will, will know us. You're the, you're the church that's got the cinema. And um, <laughs> now, wonderfully, we've got this big sign that says hope in letters that are seven foot high, <laughs> seven foot oh, tall. that's awesome. And um, beaming out, uh, lit up at night across the town. Um, so it's very exciting um, and looking forward to being in there later this year. Yeah, I was just going to say it's uh, exciting times and hopefully you'll be able to go in with... Uh, you know, with a few less restrictions, get as many people in there as you can. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, yeah, exactly. And we were looking at July as a date to move in. And, and because of delays with some construction, I'm thinking it may be God's hands on that, that maybe by September mm. we may be a little less restricted. And uh, hopefully, and we can only hope and pray that there won't be uh, so much social distancing required and mask wearing and so on. But um We'll have capacity to, to go back to one service as a church, which is really cool. We've had two services over the last five years. Um, and yeah, it'll be great just to rejoice in there. And any of you guys are welcome to come and celebrate with us at any point and uh, come and maybe just have kind of just, it's just going to be encouraging really for other churches to see and um, mm. not to kind of say, well, we're going to do exactly the same thing in our town or whatever, but just to see what, what God, um, what God can do, you know, and it's, it's going on. exciting. Yeah, I'd, I'd yeah. definitely want to pop up at some sort. Have a You'd little visit. To. Visit to Hope Church. Yeah. Um, so, as I said, we are going to discuss the whether whether uh, faith or religion is declining within the UK. Now, I've, I've been doing a little bit of digging. I've been my face is very sort of blown out, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing a little bit of research, and I've got some um, I've got some figures that I just want to read out to you before we uh, before we really get into it. And so recently, well, I say recently, it was a few months ago now, a survey was uh, carried out in which 53% of people in the UK described themselves as having no religion. Uh, 71% of young people described themselves as having no religion, of which 3% of 18 to 24 year olds uh, say they are members of the Church of England. So that's a really, really small amount. Now, on the flip side of that, there's yeah. large growth in, say, black uh, Pentecostal churches and also um, Polish-speaking Catholic churches, which could be due to immigration and certain demographics in certain areas attending different churches. So we've got a lot of uh, like disappointing, I suppose, figures there. Quite scary if you're... You know, if you're trying to build your church, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's something to worry about. And that people aren't, aren't interested at the moment. Mm. So one of the things I wanted to discuss is TV, social media, films, etc. We get a lot of influential figures. If You know, if you watch them, like I'm a big fan, for example, of Brian Cox. Uh, he's, you know, a quite well-known scientist, maybe you know him. Stephen Fry, Rick Gervais, the comedian, um, love the Joe Rogan podcast, but he, again, it's quite, you know, he's an atheist. We get a lot of influence mm. from, you know, these sources. Do you think that that is contributing to the, you know, the decline in churches or the decline mm. in churches, I, could, I should say? Yeah. Um, it's, it's quite possible, but if we rewind a little bit to some of the statistics that we've heard, I think that I think that what we probably have more accurately seen in this nation is a decline in, in what we might call nominal Christianity. So if I think back to um, my parents and their story, um, when I was four or five, they gave their lives to Jesus. They, they became Christians, but had they filled in censuses before, you know, the, in the years before that time, they would have definitely selected Church of England, you know, 
because there was for a long time this sense in which well i'm british and therefore i'm i'm church of england or i'm church of scotland or you know I, yeah. I'm, I'm i'm anglican or whatever other denomination you know there's a sense in which well we're we're, we're british and therefore we're christian and that prevailed for for, for centuries really in this nation and um what that actually looked like in reality maybe we can speculate a little bit but i think there was probably very sincere christians absolutely but some of whom who really didn't have a vibrant faith and a, and mm. a, a living a living faith in jesus and now because of influences some of whom you've, you've mentioned and some that preceded them it is no longer fashionable to say i'm a christian it's you know that it's uh, i think it's um, frank skinner who said you can be anything in this nation except a Christian. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of mockery of Christianity and, and out of faith in general, but particularly I think of Christianity, there's a lot of that. And so it's not, it's not the fashionable or done thing to say I'm a Christian. Now, I do think there will be when this latest census that we've just completed, when that is all revealed, I, st- I think there will still be quite a high amount. I think there will still be a big percent of people who say they're Christian. But does that really tally up with the amount of people who week to week are in church and, you know, uh, actually living out an active faith? I think there will still be a much higher amount of people who say they're Christians. But what we are seeing, I think, is a decline in nominal Christianity. And I actually I actually rejoice in that Um, (laughs) because although that means our culture is 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 drifting more and more from some of the the things that we 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 hold to in, in the scripture, in the Bible. Um, whilst our culture may be, as a result, shifting, I do think that there's a uh, there'll be a lot less people for whom they think that they know Jesus, but they don't. You know, mm. and 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 the key thing is knowing Jesus. Jesus says in Matthew seven, you know, some of you will say, "Lord, Lord," you know, you you you, you say the right words, but you don't know me, and. Uh, and so, in some ways, I rejoice in the decline of nominal Christianity. I think, well, no, I want to, I want to see people reached with the real gospel message of who Jesus is and what he's done and, and not have people just kind of ignore it because they think, well, I know it already. I, I, I got christened as a baby and I, I went to a church of England school and I, 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 I kind of go once at Christmas time or whatever. So I think we're seeing a decline in nominal Christianity. I think as you've put your finger on, there are places in the nation where Christianity is, um on the rise i believe it's london actually which is mm. is one of the few places in in western in the western world where christianity is rising pretty rapidly um but cultural you know the personalities of the guys that you mentioned absolutely you know they 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 play a part in that another one would be would be david attenborough who you know he's a sort of national treasure and mm. i don't know how this guy can present such beautiful shows with beautiful images and remain an atheist, you know, but he does, you know, and <laughs> yeah. there's, there's people like that who undoubtedly have um, influence, but I think that there, there has always been those who have had influence in a nation and culture that have opposed Christianity. Um, and yet it's never been squashed. It's never been eradicated. And it's, um, uh, and so that gives me hope, you know, um, but, certainly they have influence and 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 not just those that oppose but actually there's 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 influences in all kinds of areas with tv and social media that may not be explicitly opposed to the gospel and explicitly atheist but that actually are very um you know are very attractive and are very kind of alluring as it were and and draw people in that that may not be saying well, there's, you know, there's no God or, you know, Christianity is mm. false, but actually are, uh, you know, you know, there's all kinds of things that kind of are at play in the world. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If I think about it, it's interesting that you say that because out of my family, I am, you know, I am the Christian. I am, the, you know, the one they consider to be odd. I'm the only one. If yeah. I think about yeah. my mum, uh, my dad, you know, when I was young and they were completing those uh, census surveys, I guarantee that they put Church of England on it. We didn't go to church ever when I was a kid. (laughs) You know, the only time we ever went to church was when my sister was getting christened or there was a wedding or something like that. And again, the christening thing, I find that, I find that 
it, it was just like um, part of the, I, I, like, I suppose, like the national identity. People just got christened. Yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> why, why did I get christened when yeah. that was it? That was all that happened. I mean, since yeah. being baptized, but it's such a strange, yes, strange thing to do, isn't it? So um, it, it is it's like a rite of passage in for you know, and and an excuse to kind of get people together, a, a nice excuse to get people together. But like you, I mean, my parents had me christened, and then four or five years down down the line, they actually themselves gave their lives to Jesus and got baptized, and then I was <laughs> baptized when I was sixteen. You know, when I put. Um, and they would look back and think we we wouldn't do christening, you know. They they would they would sort of think, well, that, what what was all that about? But it was just a thing that they did, you know. It's a bit of a rite of passage, isn't it, for many people? Um, and I think that the more that declines, I rejoice because I think that there'll be less and less people who think they know it when they don't. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, you meet people say, oh, you know, I've been christened. Well, that doesn't really necessarily mean anything unless you've got an active and living faith. So, yeah. Now that being said, we see yep. uh, so another survey that I uh, I had a look at recently was um, Central and South America. Huge population yes. of people. I couldn't tell you how many people are there, but ninety percent of people from like both the nations within that within the Americas, I suppose, identify as Catholic. And when you look at those mm. nations, they are very, you know. Catholic is there. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's all it's, it's at the forefront. You see it. You see people practicing it daily. People praying, etc. You see that a lot. In comparison to the UK, where you don't you don't see it quite so much. It's sort of I don't want to say hidden away, but it's it's not it's not part of the national ident- identity so much as it is elsewhere. Which again, I don't know if if you if you're the same as me. I, I find that a little bit sad for the UK. I find it a little bit disappointing. However, your argument is valid still in that it, 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 it's kind of, I, I, I think maybe in South America, et cetera, they're doing it just because that's what they know. Do you know what I mean? Mm. That's how the, that's, that's always been there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I spent, uh, when I was 18, I spent six months living in Mexico and saw a little bit of that firsthand there's some stuff that really disturbed me actually seeing, you know, some of the days when they, when they celebrate, uh, you know, uh, a random virgin that turned up in the, their town 500 years ago, you know, or whatever, mm. like a, a vision of not always Mary, just different virgins and stuff. And they'd be carrying these, these statues through the streets. And I saw some of this and, you know, got to grips with some, some of this in conversation with people. And I think there is again, a lot of, tradition and identity stuff and it's it's not a in many cases not a living faith but a, you know a tradition that we just do it because it's always been like this now the positive side of having a, a catholic identity as a nation the positive side could be that well there, there might be some laws that actually protect christian um you know ideals and so on and and, and, and in case in law those things but i i would in some ways in some ways, I would almost prefer to be in a nation where people didn't assume that they they knew it when mm. when they don't. You know, um, mm. I, in our nation, uh, increasingly the laws are going to go in, in, into places where it, we can't we can't kind of support them, and um, and yet I think that in history that has often been the the kind of time where the church has shone all the brighter and and more people have come to to genuine faith um so you know for example in the first century um when the emperor nero was kind of having christians you know he was turning christians into candlesticks in rome you know throwing them to to into the Colosseum, and all kinds of horrendous stuff was going on christianity Mm -hmm. was only exploding all the more you know and and um so that there there clearly though has been such wonderful things as a result of the growth of Christianity in this nation, whether genuine and nominal. So, for example, we've got so much heritage in this nation, you know, the education system, hospitals, the NHS, all kinds of stuff that's been built upon Christian values. Um, so there's so much to celebrate there. But I'm also, um, yeah, I'm not disturbed by the fact that 
we may be swinging in a different way culturally because I just know um, God is going to, he's going to cause his church to shine, shine all the brighter. Um, yeah. But there is such encouragement, even in South America, there is a, a growth of, um, you know, vibrant Jesus centered um, Christianity, you know, not mm. sort of law, heavy law, law, you know, uh, stuff, but actually really good stuff going on in, in South America, um, Asia, Africa, which I think many people would know anyway, but, uh, and, and also in the Middle East, you know, I'm speaking to a friend of mine who's ministering in the Middle East. Incre- he can't even tell me what the nations are because of you know, the, the delicate, delicate situation, but incredible stuff going on with thousands and thousands of people um, coming to faith. And, and in some cases they happen to, to practice that faith quite covertly, but amazing yeah. stuff going on. Yeah, no, um, I've seen, I've heard, um, I've heard stories myself about people having to, you know, desperately wanting to practice their faith, but having to do it you know, secretly as it were. And, you know, it's uh, maybe, maybe one day that would change. Maybe. It's a, uh, it's interesting what you said about, yeah. um, how your time in Mexico, I've been to Mexico a couple of times, both on holidays. I was doing, you know, the touristy thing in Mexico. I wasn't, you know, I was being very cultural, <laughs> which is a shame really. But um, one of the restaurants I was in while I was in, uh, I was in Cancun and uh, mm-hmm. I can't remember what they call it. There was, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the skull masks, the, uh, what is it? The day of the dead celebration. And yeah. I think, yeah. So the, uh, my understanding is of that is, it's celebrating those who have passed. I, I think that's yeah. a very loose yeah, understanding, so. but it, it all looks very kind of dark, doesn't it? <laughs> I just don't, I don't get it. It was a bit of a yeah. shock when I saw it. I thought, oh, okay, you know, yeah. it's a bit different. <laughs> yeah, it, it does look very dark. So there's a James Bond film, isn't there, where that's the beginning of the film and he's uh, he's mm. avoiding the baddies going through that that kind of march. Yeah, it's very, very strange. Very strange indeed. But from, from what I understand as well, it's trying to honour the dead. But it's a yeah, yeah, an unusual, unusual way of doing it to our yeah, uh, to absolutely our, to our eyes anyway. Absolutely, definitely. So um, touching back on the on the first thing we spoke about was um, yeah. So what I said about outside influences or influences on TV, etc. This kind of leans into that a little bit about um, our, our our modern values. I want to say modern in inverted commas, but our modern values sort of pushing you know traditional christian beliefs aside especially amongst young people because yeah when i when you know when i, I see churches it's, it's the young people that are, are lacking a little bit more they go along with their parents and then they stop stop attending church when they say you know they reach 18 they might come back a little bit you know a few years down the line but that's that's uh that's something i i, I personally believe that you know we yeah. see that we see modern values sort of pushing aside our traditional belief. Mm-hmm. What do you, uh, what do you think of that? Um, yeah, I think that, that modern values are clearly, um, there's so many that we could, we could even touch upon here that, that mm. seem to be so uh, op- opposing some of, some of the values of the Bible. What, what is interesting to me is that even some of the things that, um, uh, someone who's an atheist might hold as, as certainties like human rights and equality of everyone's equal and so on. These are beliefs that are, are grounded and have naturally come from Christian beliefs. Um, you, you know, for example, Genesis one, that God made men and women in his image that has, that has underpinned Western society um for the last couple of thousand years and and mm. and other societies long before as well and so all of the kind of modern movements and ideas whether they acknowledge it or not which they won't acknowledge it but they do actually come back to well all human beings are made in the image of god that's ultimately if you trace the roots of a lot of the kind of um pushes for um equality and rights they, they come back to this idea that all men and women are created equally, mm-hmm. that there's something about humans that is special because we have the image of God in us. And so, yes, there are some things that are now opposing um, 
Christian beliefs. But I, I think we have an opportunity to actually say, where's that, where's that come from? You know, wh- where does this idea come from? And I think, um, I think we can actually point people to the fact that a lot of the assumption, assumptions underneath their beliefs are actually, they're, they're rooted in Christianity. Um, there's a really good book for any of your listeners who are avid readers. There's a book called Dominion um, by a historian called Tom Holland who is not a Christian, but when you read the book, uh, you think, how is this guy not a Christian? He seems to say things that are like so profound. Um, but he basically, in this book, it's quite a thick book, but he, he, he highlights what I've just said, that actually so, so much of what our, even though our, our, our nation is now pretty secular, probably 95% of people would not be Christians, really. Um, he says so much of what we assume, uh, so much of our arguments are, actually grounded in in christian arguments and and yeah. uh things that have been so impacted so maybe well if any of the, anyone who's been interested by some of that stuff then get hold of that book it's it's a big meaty book you'll be reading it till christmas time but uh really um you know really fascinating and this guy seems to be so insightful and yet doesn't doesn't uh identify as a christian um mm. so yeah i think modern modern I mean, there's so much there's a minefield of stuff out there isn't there that uh, christians have Absolutely. to navigate now Absolutely. Um, yeah. But when we're discussing these things with people, we, I think we don't want to get caught up on the, we want to get caught up on who Jesus is and, and is he who he said he was? Did he rise from the dead? And if he's who he said he was, if he's the son of God, if he's the always existing son of God, if he really died and rose again, then everything changes. Mm-hmm. Um so that's kind of what we want to get people to see Jesus for who he is, um, rather than kind of the intricacies of the culture wars and so on. Um, mm-hmm. That doesn't mean we, we shouldn't, it doesn't mean we shouldn't be thinking thing, the, these things through and uh, having, you know, reasonable um, discussions and, and that kind of stuff. But I, I think we, you know, a key thing is we want to get people to think about who Jesus is and he is undoubtedly, yeah. With no bias, he's undoubtedly the most important figure in all human history, undoubtedly. And so we've got to get people to see, okay, you know, what is this all about? How how is it 2021? Well, it's it's, it's 2021 because of Jesus. <laughs> he split mm. history, yeah. Um, and so we've we've got to help people to to engage with who Jesus is. Um, and and I think we can we can get distracted with 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 some of these big, you know, modern ideas, um, which, which underneath them all have Christianity anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, mm, yeah it's, it's true. Um, it's true. Yeah. It's, it actually reminds me of, um, the last podcast was with a lady from the Faraday Institute. And, uh, one of oh, my yeah. questions was, um, it, I, I was basically asking, you know, how could the big bang theory and, um, you know, creationism like work hand in hand. And, the way she answered it really was, I mean, long story short, because she's a much smarter person than I am, but she said, uh, yeah. don't matter, does it? Why? why? Why are we trying to figure that out? At the end of the day, mm. you know, we've got to bring it back to the, the root of what we believe. And that's, you know, yeah. the love of God, etc. Why? Why are we mm. trying to... And, and she's right. And, and it's the same thing as what you're saying, really. I mean modern values like you said are rooted ultimately in mm. you know our beliefs and they're the people that are creating the uh, like new laws etc yes. they're from the same society that we're from so yes you know their belief it goes back to probably somebody in their their lineage who was christian and mm-hmm. believes mm. exactly the same thing yeah. we do so yeah i mean absolutely yeah Modern values. What what even is a modern value? Like what 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 does that mean? <laughs> yeah. So wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we see uh, we're talking about the possible. I want to say possible. The possible decline of churches. How how does um how does the church attract younger people? So again, we're talking about modern values. You know. Uh, possibly pushing aside our traditional values or not. 
How do yeah. how do churches appeal to young people? How do you draw people in and talk to God about it? Uh, talk about God to them? Yeah. Like, what what is something Hope yes. Church does to attract young people? Yes, yeah, good good question. Something I'm very passionate about. Um, I didn't say at the beginning, but one of the one of the other things I do within our family of churches is I I lead an event called Scent, which is for students and twenties and um, We've not met this year because of COVID. We're looking to get going again next year. But I'm very passionate about churches uh, reaching and raising up um, those in their in their in their late teens and twenties. Um, I think one of the things we've done at Hope. I don't think we're smashing it, but I, we do have a lot of young adults, which is great. I'm, I'm praying for many, many more. Um, it, a key thing is community. Um, community is, you know, building community where which is um which is uh attractive because it's because it's you know it's real and it's it's um it's not kind of this false kind of well we we we, we turn up for an event on a sunday morning and that's it you know but actually something that's mm. real and authentic i think that is probably the key thing um i'll give an example we we have a football team as part of uh, our church and we, we compete in the FA league. So we're not in a church league or anything like that. We're in the normal league, probably let's say in a squad of 15, half of maybe half of the guys are Christians and half are not. Mm-hmm. And what um, the, the Christian guys in the team are, are modeling so well is just is, is, is life on life. We've got a bunch of guys that live together, house share and they're on fire for God and they, really um they do life so well they have people in well pre-covid have people in their home but they probably start doing that mm. again now um uh, and and other guys in the team are, are are looking in you know we've we've seen a guy get baptized now part of our church which is wonderful another guy who to be fair had a christian upbringing but was wandering from god got baptized he's now the captain of the football team um and um but we're seeing this i think this community and it's it is replicated in other areas of church life where there's where there's real community, where there's there's life on life, I think that is a big thing. Um, and then, so that's that's the community element. And then on on a Sunday with our with our Sunday gatherings, no doubt it will be um, the same for you guys at God Central. Is just wanting to proclaim Jesus every week. So I think you can do that whether you're whether you're doing some teaching on um, I don't know something from the Bible. You can bring you can always bring it to Jesus and always bring it back to the cross and always. Um, speak to the room as if there are not yet believers present because there normally are Mm. there's normally many people in the room who who don't believe so I think those are key things just you know attractive community living life on life living it like we believe it you know Um, Mm -hmm. and um, I think people I think young people want to see I think I think they're, they're I think young people are intelligent and they see through stuff that's not genuine you know and yeah if if you don't believe in the product you're selling, as it were, that's that sounds very crass. But if you don't believe in the product you're selling, I don't think young people want to know. And I think mm. when when they see some people who believe it, but actually, and then live it out as well, you know, radical mm-hmm. community, generosity, uh, you know, open lives. I think they they they're attracted to that. Um, yeah, absolutely. And then, and then clear clear proclamation of Jesus. Whatever you're teaching on, and we do need to teach the Bible. But whatever you're teaching on, you know, all of the Bible can be brought back to Jesus. And um, I think that's so important. So, uh, yeah, those would be my my kind of two um, stabs at that. Or oh, the third thing I'd say is this: you know, churches that want to see growth in that area of teens and twenties and so on. I think with the with the people that you've got already, invest, invest, invest in relationship. Um, mm. My story was I, you know, from my parents becoming Christians at age of four or five. I grew up in church. Teenage years really hard. Only only Christian in my class, probably one of eight eight Christians in a school of fifteen hundred. You know that that that's the reality for most um, young that's young adults and teenagers at the moment. So there were some years where I was going on to church, but I, I was embarrassed about the fact that my family went to church. I didn't want people to know. I was kind of I wasn't living all out for God, but there was relationship still there. So you know guys who just befriended me and who just had me over for pizza and watch football or, or whatever. And there's going to be probably times where 
you know, in people that you're kind of getting alongside are nowhere really in a, in a, not in a great place. You've got but relationship, 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 and then there'll come a time. And yeah. when you have more, yeah, yeah. A like, a, like attracts like, yeah. mass attracts mass, and you'll see a growth in that kind of age group in, in a church. I, I think that's, yeah, invest in, in the ones that you do have amongst you and, and invest in relationship. I think that's a, a key thing. I think it's very important. Very, very important. Uh, one of the, um, so I used to do the youth at God Central. And um, yeah, I, I think I, I think back on um, uh, New Day. So I forgot what it was called then. That's terrible. Yeah. I think back on New Day. And uh, <laughs> so the, the two lads we took were, 13 and 14 at the time, I think, maybe 14 and 15, I'm not sure. Yeah. And I thought, like, I, when I was their age, I wouldn't have told a soul that I was going to a Christian camp, <laughs> you know, with however many thousand other yeah. Christians. And, you know, it's, it's such a, like, yeah. I think you touched on it earlier, like, is, it's not cool being a Christian at the moment, is it? Do you know what I mean? Like, if, mm. you were, if you're a teenager being a Christian and going to church on a Sunday and you know, going camping with your Christian mates. It's not, it's not the coolest thing in the world. Which was why when I, when I used to take the youth out, I really wanted to level with them. I really wanted to talk to them like they were, you know, adults. You know, I, I didn't like the whole, your teenagers, we're going to, you know, do the whole teenage thing. We're going to have adult conversations. And we sort, used to sit around the table having a debate. And for me, I mean, other people do it in different ways. For me, I think that worked well because they engaged. Do you know what I mean? It made them think, don't get me wrong, a lot of the time they'd get distracted by phones and whatnot. But <laughs> yeah. It made them think about their argument or how, how they wanted to present their, their opinion. Yeah. Which is how I would like to, you know, if, if, if that's the, 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 the target audience, how I would want to draw people to, like the debate, as it were, you know, Make yeah. them have an, uh, let them have an opinion and let hear it out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, Very young good. people. Yeah. Yeah, and again, I think that needs to happen not just with young people, in my opinion, anyway, but all ages. You know, when you, yeah, I've done a few um, alpha courses. You know, sat in on a few of them. Now, a lot of the time, they're the same questions. That could be a 45-year-old person asking mm-hmm. the same question as a 14-year-old person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, engaging with people and answering their questions and having that debate. And even if it's a negative debate, even if it's not going your way and they're very stubborn, I think it's good for them to see, like, like what you were saying, like how you live as a Christian. Yeah. Does that make sense? Am I making any sense? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. No, well- well, uh, Paul, Paul writes in, in, uh, in First Thessalonians, he says, you know, um, he, he's talking about the time when he planted that church in, in Thessalonica. And he says, you saw how we lived amongst you. You, 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 mm. saw, you. you saw not just our message, but you saw how we lived, you know, and that was something that was transformative. And um, so there's that access there where people can actually can see and can actually see you processing the big things in life because you and I know that Christianity doesn't guarantee you an easy life. There's going to be hardships. There's going to be suffering. There's going to be things that you're perplexed by. And, and people to see that in your life and see how you handle it mm. is an amazing thing. I spoke to a lady at Hope Church a, son, uh, a week and a half ago. Uh, she gave her life to Jesus uh, in our Sunday service, which was amazing. I went to speak to her after the service. I said, what, you know, what's been going on in your life? She said, seven years ago, my friend died and he was a Christian and the way mm-hmm. he died made me question. He made me question the meaning of life because he was so trusting in God. And she said, mm-hmm. and I've been on a journey and now I have finally come to church and she, it was her second Sunday in church and she's given her life to Jesus and we're looking at baptizing her. But there was something about the way in which she had seen and he, she hadn't just heard him say, I'm a Christian. And this is what I believe she'd seen the hope he had even in death. I mean, that's amazing. (laughs) Yeah, that's absolutely. You saw how we live among you. That's that kind of thing, you know. And I think that that is the the key to, you know, seeing seeing many, many people come to to Jesus in the years to come. I think it's also very important to to be able to say, I don't know, as a Christian. You know, when when you hear someone say something like that, like, 
I know I know examples of people that have had, say, family members die who have turned away from God. And they've said, yeah. you know, how could God let this happen? Mm. I don't know. I don't know why God yeah. let that happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, I, I can't answer that. I'm sorry. I can't answer that. But what I know, what I personally think is bad is when I hear a Christian try and explain it. And I think, no, don't. Yeah, please don't do and that. Don't do that yeah. to that person. Yeah. Got, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Saying I don't it's, know is so important, I think, because I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're spot on, Rob. You know, it's um, if you don't know the answer, you're better just to say I don't know, and you're better to not fill it with hot air. And I think I think that has that has integrity. And again, I like, think about think about young adults as well. You know, mm. we, there's an integrity thing. I you, you, the, the people will spot people will spot it when you're just blagging and you're just trying to win an argument. It's okay to say mm. I don't know, and it's okay to yeah, say definitely. I don't know. And you can say I don't know, but I do trust that God is good. You know, and He, you know, but. I don't know why that happened. It's a mystery. It's stuff we see every week. We think, why on earth has that happened? Um, yeah. And- yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it, you know, I wish I knew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're right. <laughs> one day we will. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one day, one day. So we're, we're going to go on to growing the church as a whole. Mm. So I suppose you fall into the danger what we was talking about earlier of it being, um, you know, religion for the sake of religion, as opposed to having a, a personal relationship with God. But how does, yeah, let's say our church, you know, our family of churches, how, how do, how do we grow as a, as a family of churches or how does the church of England grow? How does it appeal to, you know, more people? Because the church of England especially you know that that's that seems to be declining in comparison to other yeah. churches in the uk how, how do they appeal to yes. more people yes well i can tell you how they i can tell you how not to and that is by by simply trying to change to be more palatable for the culture because mm. what happened is some of the some of the kind of churches within the established church not all by any means because there's many wonderful faithful church of england churches that are are growing and thriving and praise god i cheer them on where there has been this kind of well we can't say that and we can't believe that because that would offend people those churches are the ones that are dying Mm. um i don't know if you've even seen this week the church of england have actually issued a um, some guidance to Church of England schools to say be less preachy <laughs> to people. Oh, I don't know really? what to make of that, but what? Yeah, they're saying you know have songs in your assemblies that are less um, confessional and more generic and so on. I don't know what to make of that particularly, but what I what I underlying that is this thing of we don't want to offend. And I, the gospel is offensive. The, mm. You know, it's beautiful, and it's and we don't want to cause offence through being horrible people or, or saying stuff that we, we don't need to say, but the gospel of Jesus died on the cross. He's the son of God. who was sacrificed in our place because we needed it. <laughs> we needed someone to, to, to take out the punishment that we deserve because we all have fallen short. That is offensive because people, people don't want to admit that they've got things wrong. They don't want to, they want to, you know, so we, we we have to and and for the first century for that for those uh, um those Jewish believers those first followers of Jesus it was so offensive that the Messiah this long promised you know special one would die like he wouldn't come and kick the Romans out but that he would die and that was so offensive like and 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 yet and yet the message went like wildfire so. I yeah. can say I can say what it doesn't look like is trying to pander to people's sensitivities by by dumbing things down. Um, we absolutely have to preach Jesus crucified and resurrected in our place before we start telling people they've got to change their lifestyle. Like we, you know, the, throughout the Bible, it's since since Jesus died for you, this is how you're to live. You know, it's, it, we, we don't judge those who are in the world. We don't, we don't, we're not going to try and tell 
people how to live who don't have any faith in Jesus. That's, that's not that we don't do that. We want to proclaim Jesus. We want to show people that he's the way we want to point people to him as the source of real life. And um, I think that's the way that the church grows by just proclaiming Jesus and proclaiming mm-hmm. who he is and the fullness of life found in him. And other things like life change and, and, and putting to bed things in our lives that need to check that comes from faith in Jesus and walking with him. Um, so, it, you know, we don't preach moralism of, you know, some churches would in, in many years gone by would like have the 10 commandments on their walls, you know, there's the law, do these things and you'll be all right. Sort of thing. And we realize actually we can't, oh, we can't match up, but, you know, but actually proclaim mm. Jesus, uh, the one who did match up, you know, and, uh, people will be drawn to him and then the rest, the rest follows. So I think keeping Jesus central, I think not trying to dumb things down in order to to not offend people because the gospel is offensive, but not being, but but by remo- but removing as many stumbling blocks as we can. Jesus is a stumbling block, but yeah. if we can remove all the other stumbling blocks, right? You know, yeah. And and maybe even in this pandemic, we're learning some things about online engagement. We've all got room to grow in this. Some churches are smashing it. We we've got m- much more room to grow. You guys have got much more room to grow. You know. We can invite people to come and investigate, you know, Jesus. Um, so, yeah, trying to remove the stumbling blocks as much as possible. But we we recognise that that Jesus is a stumbling block. We're going to proclaim him. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, yeah, and just just being, you know, a, an example. <laughs> I think we've got some uh, dodgy in there going on, haven't we? Yeah, just being an example of um, what a Christian is, you know, like, just. I'm a normal person that, you know, I, you know, I go to work Monday to Friday, you know, I, I have all the other difficulties of life. I've got a mortgage yeah. to pay it, you know, because I'm a Christian. I, I certainly haven't got it easy. That's for sure. You know, and um, yeah. yeah, I can't even remember my own question now. I suppose what you was, um, what you was, you was talking about earlier on was the, it's, it's kind of the danger of church and politics and it's sort of the, the line getting blurred there. You know, I, I think that's what you're seeing, sort of, and what you're yeah. describing with the uh, sorry, with the um, Church of England, where the Church of England is appealing yeah. to the masses and trying to appeal to everybody. And dare I say, it, not trying to mm-hmm. hurt anyone's feelings. Not that anyone's any Christian should be trying to hurt anyone's feelings. The, those lines are starting to get blurred, you know, and you're yes. kind of losing your identity as a, a Christian, in my opinion, anyway. You know, yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which is a weird place to, be... which is a weird place to find yourself yourself in. As a, you know, I'm I'm 32 years old. When I was when when I was young, Church of England was that's all I knew. The Church of England, you know, that's 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 what I thought church was. But I kind yeah. of see it now as sort of like in a in a confused kind of place. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I absolutely, I, it does make sense. And I, I, I didn't, I wouldn't relish being in the position that uh, the likes of the Archbishop of Canterbury is in because you've got such a, you've got such a broad church, some who would have wildly unchristian beliefs on some things and some that would be, um, you know, another extreme and, and many that are faithful, but it's not, not, um not a comfortable place to be in, especially when that you are the established church and, and you know expected to expected to sort of always be pleasant actually Mm. i I think when peter got up at pentecost and preached to the 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 thousands that had gathered i don't think that was particularly pleasant you know like Mm. turn around (laughs) be baptized you know this is this is quite a um uh you know a stark message and um so yeah but they also there's also great opportunities there as well for for many Anglican churches because for still for many that's the church that people trust, and still you know there's opportunity there. There's still the church people think well, that is the church. I'm gonna if I if I'm gonna go yeah. to anything I'm gonna go to that. You know Christmas time at Easter I'm gonna go to that if I'm gonna go to anything. And so there's still opportunities there. Um, but again, uh, it's a, another don't, another, another don't place be, where um, sorry, it's an, it's another place where they're they're not appealing to young people. When, so. <laughs> When, when I've, I've, you know, I was, I don't want to say I was really trying to be a Christian, but I described myself as a Christian. I was going to church and it was at Church of England Church. 
Mm. And it was just so, it weren't, it weren't doing anything for me. Do you know what I mean? We went there for a long time and it just weren't doing anything for me. And the sad thing is, is I think it could have done, you know, it, it, but it just didn't, it just didn't at the yeah. time. I think there's, there's a kind of, yeah, they're in a bit of a, <laughs> an awkward position, I suppose. A bit of a weird position. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. anyway, we'll, we'll start wrapping it up because we've been going for 45 minutes. Yeah. But before we do, I've got a big question for you. Really big question. Go on. That I expect you to know the answer to. And uh, what's the meaning of life? <laughs> what's the meaning of life? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I would say that Ecclesiastes talks about um, fearing God. That's, that's what yeah. it's all about. Now, that's a really loaded word. We think of fear, we think of cowering and running away from, but actually it's, 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 it's knowing God. It's knowing him in all his, all his fullness. He's holy and majestic, just, righteous, loving, gracious, merciful. You know, to, to know God is, is what we're here to, to do, to, to know him, to enjoy him, to, you know, to, when we know, when we really know him, we enjoy him. And I think yeah. that's the, that's what we're here for. And that's, um, you know, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and life to the full. And he says, I'm the way to the father. So that's, you're going to know, going to know God through, through Jesus. And that is what brings life in all its fullness, um, yeah. walking with him and nothing else satisfies. And, and that is the, that's why we're here to know him. Um, that's what I would, that would be my stab at that answer. <laughs> yes. Yeah, good answer. It, that word though, that, that word fearing, I'm, I'm, I might have to do some research on that one. I, you know, yeah, Lee Bradbury, I'm, I'm sure you know him. He, uh, I'm, I reckon there's a few interesting translations there that would absolutely, yeah, there's different book, different meanings. <laughs> I don't, this will be probably the wrong way around on your screens, but this book, Rejoice and Tremble, um, I've started reading. I'm about halfway through. There's another version of this book which is a little bit less wordy. But the tagline of this is the surprising good news of the fear of the Lord. And it mm. unpacks what, what when the Bible, and it does in many places talk about the fear of God, uh, it unpacks what that, what that means. And yeah. Um, yeah, essentially our understanding of fear is, is in, inadequate, but, um, but uh, yeah, where Ecclesiastes talks about, you know, all everything's meaningless. And that the key thing is to know is to, is to fear, is to fear God and, and walk in his ways. Um, I think it's, it's talking about knowing God for who he is. He's, he's not just creator, but he's our redeemer um, yeah. and, um, and to enjoy him. But yeah, that is a, a good book to get it, get into. If you're, if you're, if you, if you like your theology and so on, this is a good book. Um, he has this guy, Michael Reeves is a brilliant author. Um, he has written another version of this book, which is a little bit, I think I probably could do with getting the slightly more simple one, um, which I might <laughs> do at some point. Do you know what I find that really interesting, actually? Because um, I, again, as as a like a, a young Christian, the theological side of things used to frustrate me, but now I appreciate it so much more. I mean, I I, I come to God. I say this on every podcast. People are probably fed up with it, but um, I, I come to God sort of mid twenties, and hmm. the theological side of things, and you know, the answers behind, or sorry, the the, the meanings of the things we read. They help me make sense of, you know, what's going on, what it is I'm reading, what it is I believe. You know, so books like that, I think, are great. I might have to, uh, I might have to have a look at that one myself. Yeah. But anyway, Tom, thank you, uh, thank you for coming in. And uh, yeah, when um, that's fine. And when uh, when the church is uh, ready to go, I'll have to, I'll have to pop up, have a visit. You'd be really, really welcome to, and, and also all of your listeners as well. It'd be really great to have of you course. come visit. Of course. Thank you, Tom. See you later, Thank and you see you everybody else. Take care.